The last kind of naming and formula writing is um, acids. So we're going to talk about acid formulas and nomenclature. And at the end, I'm going to have a flow chart that's really going to help you put all the bonding types together for when you have a test and when you have to use this in the future in chemistry. And believe me, you will. You will constantly from this point be writing formulas and names. So this is super important up here. All acids start with H. Okay, so they all start with a hydrogen atom. Hydrochloric acid, hydrosulfuric acid, hydrophosphoric acid, they all, every acid has an H as its cation. All right, if it's binary, so we've only got two elements, we're going to use the periodic table, of course, instead of the polyatomic ion chart. You guys know this now. Hold on, I'm trying to find my, there we go. All right. So we're going to use the periodic table, and the name always looks like this. If it's just binary, only two elements in it, it's going to read as hydro blank ic acid. This is huge, and this is what people forget a lot. Hydro means no O, okay? This means that it comes from the polyatomic, or sorry, this means it comes from the periodic table, not from the polyatomic ion chart. This is so important. So hydro doesn't mean hydrogen. It has nothing to do with the hydrogen. There is always a hydrogen in an acid. It's always your cation. It means no O. So hydro blank ic acid. So we look here, we see that we only have two elements, so we know it's binary. So to name this, we are gonna write hydro because it's just binary. We know we have chlorine, so we're gonna change that to chlor ic. And then we always say acid. Right here, again, we only have two elements, hydrogen and sulfur. So we know we're just using the periodic table, no polyatomic ions in here. So again, we're gonna say hydro. And then we know we have sulfur, so it's gonna be hydrosulfuric acid. Down here, again, only two elements. We have hydrogen and we have phosphorus. So we're just going to use periodic table. We've got hydro, phosphoric, because it's phosphorus, acid. All right, so that is how we name binary acids. So again, the word hydro has nothing to do with hydrogen. It means there's not a no when you use the periodic table, not the polyatomic ion chart. If it, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> if it is ternary, you've got an oxy acid usually. That means it's an acid that includes oxygen in the compound, and it's going to be a um, it's going to be a polyatomic ion. Now, these are the rules of this, the ending eight. So if you have sulfate or carbonate or any of the eights on the polyatomic ion chart, it becomes it. So this is how I think it. I ate it and it tasted icky. Okay, so eight, ick. Easy way to remember that. Ite becomes us, so I think, don't bite us, okay? So, ite us, ate it. So, that's the rules for that. Uh, a couple of my examples are missing, so I'll just make them up as we go. So, let's take a look at this first. First we, of all, we have a polyatomic ion because we know we have our first element, which is always hydrogen. If it's an acid, that tells us it's an acid. And then we still have more than one element left. So we need to look at our polyatomic ion chart. We are not going to use hydro in the name here if we have an O in it. So no O, or sorry, an O means no hydro. So we know we have carbonate. Eight, remember, becomes ick. So we're going to have carbonic acid. 
So that's how we name this if we have a polyatomic. Um, let's say we have uh, H3PO3. All right, so we've identified this as non-binary. It's an oxyacid because we have a polyatomic in here. So we know we don't use the word hydro. Instead, we need to look at our polyatomic. It's phosphite. Okay, so this is phosphite. And we know from up here, ite becomes us. So we change that. Now, phosphite is a little weird because we don't say phosphus acid. We actually put back in the um, syllable. So we say phosphorus acid. And that's just something you kind of get used to. You'll see it enough where it'll seem normal. So that ite changes to us. Um, let's look at, let's say one more in here. Um, let's say we have H-C-L-O. All right, so we know that we've got a polyatomic here because there's more than one element after the hydrogen. So the name of C-L-O, we are not going to have hydro in the name, but C-L-O is called hypo, oops, hypochlorite. So we are simply going to change that ending to us. Hypo has nothing to do with hydro either. Totally different word, okay? So it's going to be hypochlorous acid. And that's all there is to it. But you have to remember when you use the periodic table and it always becomes ick, and when you use the polyatomic chart, it becomes ick and it becomes us. Now, writing acid formulas, if there is a hydro in the name, again, we're going to use the periodic table, okay? If no, we're going to use the polyatomic chart. So this takes a little memorizing here and a little practice. So make sure you're being, you know, real, um, paying attention to detail with your practice. We're going to use charges and crisscross, just like before, okay? So even though we have an H, which is a nonmetal, and other nonmetals sometimes we're going to use charges and crisscross like it's an ionic compound. So let's look at hydrofluoric acid. Hydro tells us periodic table, okay? So we know our cation for an acid is always H, and H just has a one plus charge. Since we know that we're using the periodic table, it's fluorine that we're looking for as our anion. Oops. So fluorine is our anion, and fluorine has a one minus charge. So we know the formula for hydrofluoric acid is HF. Phosphoric acid, there is no hydro. So right there, it should tell you that you have a polyatomic um, anion, okay? So we always start with H as our cation, always. So phosphoric, so we have to pay attention to the ending here. And remember that ic, came from eight. So we need to look and find phosphate on our polyatomic ion chart. And if you do that, we know phosphate is PO4 with a three negative charge. We're just gonna do our crisscross like we always have. So we're gonna get H3PO4. Let's look at hydrophosphoric acid as compared to phosphoric acid. So hydro, once again, tells us that we have no O and we are using the periodic table. So we have H. And since it's phosphoric, we know it came from phosphorus because that's just an element on the periodic table. So crisscross and we're gonna get H3P. So pay attention to the difference here. Hydrophosphoric acid, periodic table, so we have H3P. Phosphoric acid, polyatomic, so we have H3PO4. So pay real close attention to um, that kind of stuff. So um, those are those three. I'm going to erase them so I have a little space for the next couple. And let's look at hypochloric acid. Do we have a hydro? No. OK. 
Okay, hypo and hydro are totally different things. And again, neither of them really have anything to do with hydrogen. So hypochloric acid, there's no hydro. So we're going to look at the periodic, or sorry, the polyatomic ion chart. Ick came from eight. Okay, so we're looking for hypochlorate on here. Um, uh, let me find hypochlorate. And of course, that's one I don't have on your periodic table. So let's pretend that this was hypochlor plus acid. Let's make that a little bit easier. So that's hypochlorous acid. So us came from it. So we're looking for hypochlorite on our periodic table, or our, sorry, on our polyatomic ion chart. So um, hypochlorite, we need to start with our H plus, our hydrogen, because that's always our cation. And then we have ClO with a one minus charge. So it's going to be HClO for hypochlorous acid. Last one, cyanic acid. This is a little irregular because it is cyanide is what it comes from. So this is just kind of one of those exemptions you just kind of have to remember. So we always start with H+. Cyanide isn't an element on the periodic table, so we wouldn't be able to find it there. So we have to look at our polyatomic ion chart. And if we find cyanide, it's Zn with a 1 minus charge. So it's going to be HCN. Okay, so that's how we write our acid formulas. Now, what I have here, and I'm going to attach um, a copy of this too in the module, um, I think this is really helpful. I know it's a little harder to see because it's kind of small on here, but again, it's better if I attach it. When you are going through and you are looking at any formula or name now of a um, chemical compound, the first thing you need to do is decide, does it start with H? If it starts with H, it is an acid, okay? You're going to use charges and crisscross. Next thing you have to think about, is there an oxygen? And then you have to follow all of the rules for naming and writing for uh, formulas, depending on if there's an oxygen or not. So if it's in starts with an H, it's an acid, and that's one whole category over here for naming and formula writing. If it does not start with an H, then you have to think, is the first element a metal or a non-metal? If it's a metal, it's ionic. If it's a non-metal, it's covalent. If it's ionic, we know we use charges and crisscrossing. But then we have to think, is it a transition metal to decide whether we need to use Roman numerals in the name? So you need to follow the rules for ionic bonding. If it doesn't start with H and its first element is a nonmetal, you have a covalent bond, in which case we do not use crisscrosses and charges in formula writing. In fact, we use prefixes for the names of formulas. So you've got to follow the covalent rules. So I would kind of use this as a little crutch for a little bit to kind of help you get everything in order in your head and um, as you're starting, you know, really learning these. Because again, we're going to be writing formulas and naming all year long and it's very important. So, um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, post a or a copy of this in the module. I would print it out if you can or at least save it somewhere where you have it handy. And uh, as always, let me know if you guys have any questions. Thanks.